Hello everyone, Ernesto Vasquez with the San Diego Central Library welcoming you to another Jammin' at the Library guitar instructional video for beginning and intermediate guitar players. For this video, we'll be taking a look at how to read and play guitar chords. If this is your first time learning how to play the guitar, I recommend you check out all the other videos in the series. You can find these videos along with other library related programming in the San Diego Public Library's YouTube channel. A chord in music is when we play two or more notes simultaneously. For this introductory video on chords, we're going to learn how to play four basic guitar chords, A major, A minor, and E major and E minor. But before we even attempt to play chords, we need to learn how to read guitar chord charts. This is a chord chart. It's a diagram which gives us a visual description of how to play a guitar chord. The diagram is also a visual representation of the fingerboard. We have the six vertical lines which represent the strings. For right-handed players, the chart is read from left to right, with the leftmost line representing the sixth string. This is a chord chart for left-handed guitarists. It is the inverted image of the right-handed chart. It is read from right to left with the rightmost string representing the sixth string. In this video, I'll be using right-handed charts to teach, but will include left-handed charts at the end of each segment. The horizontal lines mark out the frets. If the chord chart is of a chord played around the first three frets of the guitar, you'll see a solid black line at the top, which represents the nut. On top of the nut, you'll sometimes see X's and O's. The X's tell the player to avoid strumming the string when playing the chord. The O's above a string tell the player to play that string open. The dots inside the diagram tell us where to place a finger on the fingerboard. The numbers tell the player what finger to place. These finger numbers are usually written under the string, as in this example, next to the X's and O's at the top of the chart, or written inside the dots in the chart. So for example, for string two, we will be placing our third finger on the second fret. The letter on top of the chord chart gives us the name of the chord. Now that we know how to read guitar chord charts, let's play some guitar chords. Let's begin with E major. We'll start by going down the line and looking at what is played on each string. There's no dot anywhere on the fretboard for the sixth string, but there is a circle above the string. This tells us we'll play that string open. On the fifth string, there's a dot on the second fret and a number at the bottom of the string is telling us to use our second finger. So let's leave our second finger there and move on to the fourth string. There's another dot, again on the second fret, but we'll be using our third finger. Keeping those fingers down on the fretboard, we move on to the third string. We have another dot, but this time it's on the first fret. We'll use our first finger to play this note. Finally, for the second, and first string, we don't place any fingers down on the fingerboard, but we do have two circles above the strings, telling us we'll be playing those strings open. Before strumming the E major chord, we're going to arpeggiate the chord. What this means is that we're going to individually play each note that makes up the E major chord. We're going to do this by starting on the sixth string and moving all the way down, playing each string individually until we get to the last string. We're going to repeat this cycle two times. If you find that some of the notes are muffled or just aren't sounding at all, Try firmly pressing with your fingertips and not the pad of your finger. 
Also, aim for having rounded knuckles, meaning you don't want the joints in your fingers to be straight. It can also get cramped on the fingerboard when playing chords. You don't want to have the fingers placed on the fretboard right behind each other. For E major, you'll see that my second finger is placed on the upper part of the fretboard and my third finger is right below it. With those tips in mind, make the appropriate adjustments and see if you hear any improvements. If you're still having issues, remember that with practice, this will become easier. Next, we're going to strum E major for four counts, and we're going to repeat this twice. Remember that when strumming, most of the movement comes from your forearm. Remember how I mentioned that at times space can be cramped on the fingerboard when we play chords? You're going to notice that this can be an issue when playing A major. Let's take a look at the chart. We have finger one on the second fret of the fourth string. Finger two on the second fret of the third string. And finger three on the second fret of string two. If we look at the top of the diagram, we find that we'll be playing the fifth string and the first string open. We have an X on top of the sixth string. This tells us that we won't strum that sixth string when playing this chord. Now, as far as making space for your fingers that are on the fretboard, try placing them diagonally. Let's now arpeggiate A major for two cycles. We are now going to strum A major for four counts and we're going to repeat that for two cycles. Now that we know how to play E and A major, let's learn how to play E and A minor. Even though these two chords have the same letter name as the previous two chords we just learned, because they're minor, they're going to sound different. This difference between major and minor chords is something that we'll explore in a future lesson. If we think about the shape our fingers are forming when playing A minor, its shape is identical to E major, except we'll be moving that shape over one string. We have our second finger on the second fret of the fourth string. Our third finger is going to be placed on the second fret of the third string. And our first finger is going to be placed on the first fret of the second string. We will also play the fifth string and the first string open. The only string we won't be playing is the sixth string. Again, let's arpeggiate A minor for two cycles. Let's strum A minor for two cycles of four counts. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. For E minor, we are going to place our second finger on the second fret of the fifth string. We also place our third finger on the second fret of the fourth string. Looking above the diagram, we'll be playing all the other strings open. Let's arpeggiate the E minor chord for two cycles.
Now let's strum the E minor chord for four counts and repeat that for two cycles. This concludes our Jammin' at the Library guitar instructional video on basic guitar chords. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the San Diego Public Library YouTube channel. In our next video, we'll continue to learn additional guitar chords and also begin to pair these chords to create chord progressions. Thank you.